Hi, I'm Mike Turner, Senior Designer with DG Design, and I'm introducing a series of industry blogs focusing on VROD usage within a live project environment. In this episode, I'm going to be touching on one of my personal projects and using it as an opportunity to introduce the principles of decal application in VRED. Um, I'll give you a basic walkthrough to, to get you started on the principles. And I'll be showing you a simple technique for applying dirt and scratches to your images to, to give the design a, a bit more character, to make it look a bit more yeah, like it's been lived in. We'll be touching on transparency maps in VRED and talking about Photoshop post-processing, uh, layer masks and overlays, just to yeah, give you some kind of familiarization with that. I uh, hope you enjoy the show. Thanks. Okay, so for this tutorial on applying decals and basic dirt, I'm going to be using uh, an alias sketch model that I made about a year ago, which is kind of based on quite a famous rally car from the early 90s. Um, so this, this model's mine, but I'm going to apply a livery to it in the style of, of the rally car at the time. But um, I'm going to be using this series of made up decals, uh, which I've got in here. Um, which don't contravene any of the original branding, but, but sort of give a flavour for what it is. And this, this tutorial will walk you through the process of getting decals onto the car and then applying a little bit of dirt. Um, the tutorial is going to be quite long, so I'm going to use uh, sped up footage in places because yeah, it gets a bit repetitive, but I'll, I'll break and go into normal speed mode um, whenever there's a key point to raise and talk through. But, the model itself has been set up such that the body shell has been mirrored through centerline and then merged, that I've got one clear mesh that runs all the way through. Uh, this is an important kind of start point when you're doing this kind of work uh, because I want the livery to sort of go across centerline uh, and I want to have features on it that aren't reversed as they project all the way through. So to do that, I need one set of complete geometries. So that's the first point. So the business of getting decals in in VRED is actually really, really straightforward. If, if we um, bring up th this screen here, this is just a folder that I've got in uh, Windows. And what I'm literally going to do is I'm going to drag and drop some decals into there in the first place. So if we take this patch, which represents the door graphic on the uh, right hand side, if I take the left hand side for starters, drop that in. The first thing to say, ask you if you want to add a decal. So it's already starting to apply that and you get this decal manipulator up. And if you drag out from the center, you can increase the scale and you can slide the decal about on surface, position it rearward. And this one lets you sort of control the extrude depth. So that one I can take further into the model space to give me more depth. We can get that maybe a little bit bigger and a little bit further back. I don't know, and maybe rotate it a little bit as well using this tool so it sort of follows the line of the bodywork a little bit more. So switching texturing off and switching the wireframe off so you can see that you got your first decal in. And if we actually look at this now, if I put that, assign that to our tutorial layer so that we're looking in here. This is over here, this is the, the multi-pass material. So this is the, the base metal car paint to which I've started to apply the first decal. Uh, and there's lots of useful information in this window, in the diffuse texture window, to tell me about the projection orientation and positioning. Um, for some decals that becomes quite important, uh, for others it's less critical, but one thing we can do is I want that decal to wrap onto there. Um, sorry, one, one thing that we, that we can do is refer back to those numeric values. I'll, I'll do that slightly later on in the tutorial, but for now I'm going to drop in a few more. So if we're talking about textures, let's get the right hand graphic in, in much the same way. So now, as you can see, the second graphic has joined the stack. So the, the metallic car paint's at the bottom of the stack and the decals are layering up over the top. So this is the right-hand decal, but from the left-hand side, 
I know that the projection size is 507. So I can very quickly go in here and type in 507 to get my numeric equivalent the same. And in terms of positioning it fore or aft, there's an indication here. Um, that's position 1398 rearward in X axis. This, this first column denotes X, second column denotes Y, third column denotes Z. So I know the original one that I applied was 1398 rearward. This new one is 1156, but I can type in 1398 and it will slide it back in space in much the same way as it had previously. I knew this decal on the left-hand side, the first one I'd applied, had a rotation that I put on it of two, around 2.5 degrees. We can rationalize that and I can apply 2.5 degrees to the same decal on this side. On, on what this allows us to do, this method of working allows us to do, is really ensure that we're getting symmetry from one side of the car to the other. Now, in, for some projects, that won't be critical, but for others, yeah, maybe more so. So getting that positioning, getting that understanding as to where decals are going in and, and being able to sort of mirror that across and control those numeric values is really useful. Now, the last one that I didn't check was the overall height. The other one was at 595. And this one, when we look at it, yeah, it comes in at pretty much the same place, but you, you, can, you can balance it. Now, maybe you don't need to be that fussy um, for what you're doing. You might just want to skip it in by eye, but it's, it's very nice to have that numeric control when you want it. So anyway, I'm going to crack on now and apply a few more. Uh, I'll probably do this a little bit quicker, um, but I'll slow the footage down when we need to. Right, bear with me. So that's already looking fairly good and maybe we, the last one is that we worry about putting some sort of decal on the back. Let's go in with one of those. And again, because this is quite deep. Maybe we pull it out a little bit. Uh, maybe with this one, you change the orientation to maybe it's more flatter, maybe it's 75, so it's coming in more horizontal. Position there, centered on there. So, as you can see, very quickly we've been able to build up some basics. Now, the other aspect that I wanted to touch on briefly was dirt. Um, what I've got in here is uh, just a very basic sort of fong material shader that I've that pulled in. Um, currently set as being quite dark, but it's got a transparency map on it, which has got a, a scratches map, which is it's just a simple file I pulled off the internet. It's just a free image. Uh, like a PNG file that applies a certain amount of dirt. Um, and what I can do is if I literally just drag that into my multipass, yeah, what that's doing is giving a simulation of dirt across the material surface. So actually I need to assign that to there to give more an impression of it. And again, I've actually got a couple of these things that just sort of help me 
later and get a, get a feel for what that dirt looks like. And what I'll show you next is a technique in Photoshop um, which will allow you to play games with where that dirt is actually placed um, once, once you've done a rendering so you can give it more of an abstract feel so it doesn't look just completely uniform like it does here um, but it actually lets you sort of fine tune areas of dirt versus areas of cleanliness but for now you know I think for what's that been sort of 10-15 minutes worth of effort uh, I, I think yeah the, cap the decaling capabilities in V-Red are, are absolutely superb and be being able to pull this up out of the ground uh, without relying on UV maps we're just just developing it from very sort of simple individual decals uh, positioning those numerically I think that's given us you know <laughs> a really nice way of, of developing an initial livery and yeah, set, setting the file up to produce some really interesting renders. Okay, so just to walk you briefly through the Photoshop technique I was talking about where you can play around with where, where the dirt's placed and, and add other features. What I'm basically gonna do is take two renderings. Um, the first of which, is with the car dirty as, as you see it here so just spit that out as rendering get that done and then what I want to do also is grab a clean rendering so it's the car without the dirt applied and the easiest way of doing that that I found you can do things with switches and things like that but basically in this layer stack if you take your dirt shader which is the one that you've applied last and drag it so it's hidden behind the car paint so it's below there Basically what you get when you hit ray trace is a rendering of the car in its clean form. Um, what you will find is when you view it in OpenGL, because you put something behind that metallic car plane, Vera gets a little bit confused uh, in display mode and sort of goes, hang on, there's, there's some sort of sub-transparency thing going on here. So yeah, if we switch off ray tracing, you'll see that the surfaces go a little bit strange there. But if you drag the dirt back out, it's fine. Uh, oh, if I drag that back to there, it comes out fine. Um, but basically, don't worry about it. Get those two renderings out, and then what you can do is, in Photoshop, if we switch to that, you've basically got a situation where you've got a dirty, so you've got the clean rendering and the dirty one overlaid. Uh, and what you can basically do is, as a post-processing exercise, if you go to your dirty layer, and apply that as a layer mask. You've got the opportunity to mask in here. Now currently, because it's indicated as white, the whole image is shown. But if you go into the image perhaps with a soft brush, yeah, something like that, and black there, and maybe turn down the opacity, what you can do, let's set that to 15, is by, uh, bear with me, set that to 15. What you can do is you can basically paint back into the data. Uh, and when you're painting with black on this mask layer that you've assigned, it's, it's reverting back to clean. So you can rub the dirt away locally, which is as it would be in real life. You know, you're not, you're not going to have a car that's uniformly dirty. You know, you're going to have some areas of high wear uh, and some areas where they're not. So by painting back into the model you can control where the dirt's applied um let's up to 35 i mean you know you can put streaks and things into it which just helps break it up helps make it look a little bit less regular and uniform and for static images yeah this is this is absolutely great obviously if you were going to do a full animation you, you, you pursue a slightly different technique because you'd want to bake that in again working with transparency inside the you know the actual shaders themselves to determine where they actually fall but for now you know for one 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 off images or you know where you find your feet on what level of dirt you want that was pretty well um now what you can also do is is just for fun is is maybe you want to make the car look a little bit weathered and uh, yeah again i've been playing around with this you've got maybe things like pictures of scratches things that you found on the internet you, know, you can just google car paint scratch you can sort of isolate that grab it and you can start to apply bits of that 
into your model. Now, you know, it doesn't really matter what, what that is, whether it's particularly a scratch or a, or a bit of dirt. You, what, what you find in reality is, is once you start playing around with these things, once you start, you know, cut, cutting into them, um, yeah, it, it all starts just looking like weathering. You know, you can, you can play games with how that looks. So there's maybe things like that you can do if you wanted to imply, you know, an area where the car had sort of been maybe sort of scrawled down a gate post, you could, you could isolate that. Uh, you could come back to your model, you know, drop that in as a layer. Uh, and that one, I think I just applied as a, a screen layer. Um, with full opacity, it's a little bit too vicious, but by bringing it down, you know, it, it starts to look something like. So, it, so again, as part of your post-processing exercise, you know, you very quickly end up with something that looks a bit damaged. Maybe, yeah, you know, just for fun, as a little bit tongue-in-cheek, um, you know, round, round filler cap details. Maybe there's an indication that the car's been filled in a hurry. Um, so maybe there's a a mechanics handprint in there. Um, this is just something again that I'd found on on the web. But you know, we can grab that handprint, put it in, transform. Scale it, yeah, maybe, maybe distort it a little bit. Yeah, so if I zoom in a little bit, you can get an indication of that. So it's a bit more wrapped around the body side. Edit, transform, maybe warp it. Where are we at? Warp. Yeah, so yeah, we're just sort of trying to wrap it gently like it's, it's on the contours of the vehicle a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect, you know, handprint can be slightly smeared. At the minute it's full opacity, which just doesn't look right, but you can use that just, excuse me, just while you get it roughly positioned and then just bring the opacity down. You, you, you just want, you just want an absolute hint of it. And I think when I did this set of images in the first place, you know, I played around with the idea that maybe you know, there's a little bit of cheekiness in the uh, the pit crew, and maybe the the, the team behind it have, have been uh, drawing on on the surface of the car. You know, like like you do as a kid when you got a little bit of dirt on your side. So maybe, maybe you bring that. Up, you know, maybe you could you could put in hints of keeping score on something, or even you know putting in a hint of a skull and crossbones for sport or a clean me or something like that, you know, so you're hinting at it. And because it's all very faint, it's it's barely there, but it's just little details like that. Then when you sort of zoom out and see it, it's in there faint as a detail, but all these things just help bring the rendering to life and maybe tell a little bit of a story that they just hint at, yeah, what, what's going on with the design, bit of a backstory uh, that, that just add a little bit of interest. So. As you can see, there's, there's plenty of things you can do in Photoshop to sort of post-process and liven up the image uh, and the results once you've finished having a bit of a play with it instantly look you know, a bit more interesting than coming back to a straight clean car rendering. So you know, just by applying these few things, it just yeah, gives, the, gives the idea a little bit more character, a bit more of a backstory. Okay, thanks for listening. I hope you found that of some interest and use to, to your own work. And I look forward to talking to you again on, on the next series. So thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.